anything up here. I want to first thank Sheriff Jim Neal for his terrific work from his office in investigating uh, this officer involved shooting. I think you all got copies of the, the letter I sent to the chief, um, Dave Warman, who is here with us today also. Um, before we play this uh, body camera, I do want to say a couple of things. First of all, and it's in, it's in your release, but I want to say it, I want to say it to you orally. Um, people have a tendency to second guess the activities of police officers uh, that are involved in these shootings without knowing the facts. It has been our intention as technology has overtaken the law in Ohio uh, in terms of how we release information to ensure that our investigations are thorough and complete and aren't jeopardized by premature release of this type of information. We have had cases where a body cam uh, ultimately led to valuable evidence and the, the premature release of it would have been detrimental to the investigation. Officer Joshua Hilling from Glendale um, is one brave individual and you're going to see it for yourself. He showed remarkable restraint involving the confrontation of an individual uh, who was clearly armed. Officer Hilling didn't know it, but he was at the time of being stopped. He was walking on 75 South. He was wanted for murder in Baltimore, Maryland. And as a matter of fact, the weapon he had uh, and was directing towards the officer and officers later, uh, there's a high probability that that was the murder weapon used against his roommate in Baltimore. We're awaiting further DNA tests from uh, the evidence we've, we've gotten for the prosecutors and law enforcement in Baltimore. Uh, in the meantime, he's being held on an attempted murder charge here in Cincinnati. It will go to a grand jury before the 13th of April, and we are going to seek those attempted murder charges. Julie, what does he face in that? 11 years, 11 years potential uh, prison sentence in Ohio. In this way, it gives Baltimore more time, DNA tests to take time. We will make sure he's held. And just based on this film, this body camera alone, you will see that the case is very solid against him. Uh, Chief, do you want to say anything? No? Um, Go ahead. Just that uh, I appreciate all the work that the county, uh, Evendale, and all the surrounding agencies, Sharonville, Woodlawn. It was amazing to see uh, everybody come together and, and, and take care of this in, in a professional fashion. And I'm just pleased with my department, and, and uh, I'm you know, just excited that this is over, to be honest with you. Sheriff, you want to say something? Joshua did an excellent job as a police officer. He handled himself very well. After you see the video, you can only pray and wish that every police officer, every deputy sheriff in Hamilton County was of top quality. With that being said, um, I want to thank you all and thank you, Thanks, Joe, okay, thank you. for your work. The, um before we show this video, and I know, I think we're going to hand out the video afterwards. Is that correct? Um, we're going to play it first. Just, I don't know if anyone's feeding this live or not. There's, there is no, um, for lack of a better term, goriness to it. There are some um, expletives in this tape. Uh, frankly, all consistent with training of this officer and um, again I'm not going to speak for the chief or the sheriff but um, Joshua Hilling deserves a medal for what he did 
Anyway, go ahead, Jenny, if you can play that for us. This, by the way, we're going to play about the first 10 minutes. Once he's handcuffed on the ground, we'll stop it. Your, your video will have everything in it. Your video will have everything in it. Okay, we are now watching the video that uh, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office has uh, provided from the body cam from Officer Josh Hilling with the officer involved shooting. Now, apparently this uh, video does contain some um, colorful language, so we are not uh, going to play the audio for you right now as we watch the video of that confrontation that happened last week on I-75. Right now, you see the uh, officer approaching uh, the suspect, Javier Pablo Alaman, 46 years old, and asking him for ID uh, before they got into this tussle. Uh, with the individual. Uh, remember, Alamon was also wanted for a warrant out of Maryland. Now, uh, Joe Dieters just talked about the brave actions that uh, he took in the uh, in the in this case and uh, now the officer we are told is uh, asking if he has any weapons on his person so now uh, as we remember from uh, reporting the story last week this is apparently when the confrontation got heated and he asked him uh, whether or not he had the weapons There's on him and then wanted to search fired. his bag and, and you're going to be able to tell almost immediately and I'll and we'll we'll bring it up when it when it occurs but it's very shortly here. All right, the prosecutor's uh, Joe Dieters is again rolling the video, uh, mentioning that the shot is difficult to hear after it is fired and uh, the suspect is hit. Uh, the confrontation is continuing. This again is on I-75 after this confrontation last week on I-75. This is the body cam video from uh, Officer uh, Hilling right there. And now you see the action right there. He's got his weapon out. We can't hear any of the commands that are being given at this point, but we see the suspect. The suspect is down. Oh, he's back up. He's yelling at him to get down on the ground. As you can see, the suspect continues to approach him. The traffic there is uh, um, still moving. As we see the suspect continuing to move forward toward the officer, the officer um, is saying that the suspect has a knife at this point. So we don't know if that was the shot right there. He's still trying to order the man to the ground. He's taking off his jacket. Again, the suspect was identified as Javier Pablo Aleman, who was wanted for murder out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And as you can see, the officer exercising great restraint here as this confrontation ensues with traffic passing by, we presume, on I-75 as they are right off on the shoulder there. He continues to tell him to get down on the ground, get down on the ground. The suspect refuses. Again, we're not playing the audio portion because there are uh, some expletives being used in the video. We don't know whether it's from the suspect or from the officer while he's giving his verbal commands, but you see uh, the suspect there refusing to listen. Alamon refuses to listen and continues to march toward the police officer. The officer showing tremendous restraint. We, we're not sure if he has uh, fired a weapon or not. Apparently the uh, suspect right now has been shot once, but still continues to march toward the officer. The 
Okay, so now they're asking uh, that the other units block off traffic so they can put this man or try to get this man under uh, under control and under arrest here on the side of the road. But the officer just continues to exercise restraint, backing up, still yelling at him to get down, just backing away. And now, now another officer arrives. You can see him there just off to the right. Again, this is the uh, body camera from Officer Hilling, who has indeed fired a shot and believes that the suspect is hit at this point. So it looks like he does have a weapon in his right hand there, but refuses to get down on the ground. You can see the uh, shiny object there in his right hand, there right on his right knee. Okay, so they're giving him the commands to get down. He refuses. It's, it is, it is awfully frightening as if he wants the officers to uh, take more violent action. And he refuses to drop the knife. And it looks like he's fallen at this point. All right. Okay, so he was tased at this point. And now the officers are... Uh, going in there to apprehend him, put the handcuffs on him, and uh, get him some medical Any attention. Questions? All right, let's Any go questions? back to the news conference now and listen to uh, the prosecutor, Joe Dieters. Speak at all to, A, the distance that was covered there, and have, uh, I assume your officers been debriefed in the course of all this, um, why he didn't shoot a second time through the course of all this? That's an individual choice. Um, when you're in a, situ a situation like that, uh, unfortunately, I was back in 87, where I was involved in a shooting where I was ass assaulted with a shotgun. It's, it's the level of threat. Um, with this guy uh, handling a knife, distance, distance is an asset for a police officer. So the officer was able to maintain a distance. Uh, obviously, you've seen him walk and he was constantly in motion, constantly in motion. And uh, I, if he was backed into a corner, the, uh, you probably would have possibly have uh, had a second shot if the officer would have been backed into a corner and the perpetrator uh, kept approaching with a uh, deadly weapon. Um, this, obviously, this police officer did a very excellent job. He got a bad hombre off the streets, um, and my hat's off to him. I mean, you know, we go through uh, crisis uh, training as police officers and to de-escalate. What you've seen here was an officer trying to de-escalate an offender who was bringing deadly force forward onto these officers. It, it's just excellent police work. I, should, I would note for you that, um, as the sheriff said, it, had he been cornered, these, these officers were backing up on 71 southbound with a traffic stop behind them. And they were 75, I'm sorry, and they were very quickly running out of space where that might have been necessary until the one officer successfully tased him. That taser was deployed by a sheriff officer, right? Correct. Was that, was that distance, did he keep the proper distance the whole time, or was there a point where the suspect was close enough? I don't think he was ever close enough to be able to use his knife. But, I mean, he's rapidly coming towards the officer. That's apparent, and especially initially. I mean, he was doing a pat-down for the officer's safety when um, he pulled a knife out of his waistband. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Hey, yeah. There was a delay in releasing this video, and, and I just wanted you to, to explain uh, which prongs. Uh, the the delay. The investigation was finished this morning. It was released immediately. Once the investigation's over, I have no problem with the body cams being released, and um, but you know, and I get the role of the media and, and, and all. And we're going to ultimately find out from the Ohio Supreme Court um, if, if what our theory is that if it would jeopardize the investigation. Look, we're not Chicago. We turn these things around very quickly. 
the shooting in Chicago, I think it was over maybe a year and a half before they completed their investigations. We were just chatting up in my office um, about how Hamilton County is so different than really the rest of the country. We turn these things around very quickly and for a good reason too. I mean, people deserve to know, uh, but it's a balancing test. You can't jeopardize your investigation just so people can watch something. Once we were finished with, once we were finished with the investigation, I don't have any objection to releasing it. And we did it um, recently in two other cases. I guess Joe, the central question is if, if, in what you're talking about is whether body cam video is a public record from the get go. I don't understand that theory. I don't. I just don't understand that. It's a. It's a piece of evidence. It's not an incident report. But you know, look. These are. I said this before. Technology has overrun uh, Ohio law, and this is. We're not unique in this situation. This is happening all over Ohio. It's happening all over the United States. Um, I think ultimately the state legislature is going to have to pass a law, laying out exactly what is discoverable by the media or the public and when. And whatever the law is, we'll follow it. But I can tell you in cases, and there are cases that we've had very recently where the release of a body cam would have affected the investigation and the strength of our case. I'm happy for body cams. I wish reporters wore them too. But uh, <laughs> do you guys have any sense of what Alleman's status is in the hospital? When we might see him in court? He's recovering. I don't know the answer, but we're going to proceed to the grand jury. Chief Foreman, would, if, if you don't mind, I, I, I would like to hear from you about, you know, as you watch this once again, what you would say about your officer and the way he has handled this situation where you have a suspect who's clearly armed who wants to be shot by police and the command over and over again to get on the ground he's up he's down he's coming towards you talk about that if you would for a moment the, sure what you think he this is late. first uh the officer's been with me for four months full time so if that tells you anything he had great restraint uh he's been with me four years as a part-time officer so his training has paid off. He's followed everything to the T. He was able to get himself away from the back of his cruiser and open up space between him and the uh, perpetrator. And, uh, you know, I praise him for doing that and not shooting him a second time. Was, was Alleman really, uh, he kept saying, kill me, kill me, kill me. Do we see an avoidance of suicide by cop here? Uh, I believe that's what he wanted. Uh, you're also, when you watch the tape again, you'll, you'll hear him say, I've already killed somebody. I so, kill somebody else. Someone else. So he's been there before. And if you also notice the way he takes the knife and he brings it to a striking stance, he's holding it down and he flips it over. So he's, he's well skilled with a knife, you can tell. How is, the, how is Officer Hillings doing having gone through an experience like this where he might have been justified shooting a second time, I don't know, but uh, where he used that restraint to go through the emotion of something like this? Um, you know, it's, it, it's, every day there's nothing we want to do than shoot somebody. You know, it's not what we do every day. It's, it's something that probably will never happen in his lifetime, praise be. Um, he's very emotional about the whole situation. I'm sure he wished it never happened. Um, but it did. And uh, he's handling it well. And uh, hopefully he's back to work real soon. What's his status with the department? He's off, he, off with pay at this point. Pending what? Uh, a full evaluation? Everything has been complete. Um, Prosecutor Dealers has just released him uh, to go back to work, so hopefully uh, in the next day or two he'll be back. You know, keep in mind that Officer Hilling also uh, may have saved other people in the community. I mean, this guy wanted to kill other people. We believe with great certainty he killed one person already. Um, he did it. He did a great service to this community. Anyway. Have any of you been able to determine what Aliman 
was doing going to from prior to? Or, I mean, he was probably avo he's probably avoiding arrest. Yeah, but I mean, do you know where, where he was prior to no. this? He said Dayton, but yeah, no idea where he was heading. I tend not to believe murderers. So, okay, thanks everyone. Thanks, thank you, Sheriff. Chief, thanks. All right. Prosecutor Joe Dieters uh, giving us the body cam video of Officer Josh Hilling from the Glendale Police Department. There we got to take a look at the confrontation that ensued on I-75 with the officer showing incredible restraint uh, with the suspect uh, Pablo Aleman yelling, Javier Pablo Aleman yelling for the officer to shoot him, shoot him. Uh, Hilling fired his weapon one time and then chose not to fire anymore. We'll have a complete wrap up of this story coming up on WLWT News 5 at noon. Please. Join us then for a complete report.